this is not a colonial project. This is not about occupying territory. It's just trying to find ways of allowing what is already here, the richness that is already here, to be seen again, maybe through the irritation uh, of these new mineral presences. I started with this idea, can we have outlookers? Can we have these sentinels that actually in the light like this you read as silhouettes, as almost black holes in human form that indicate a human presence in space, but in some senses identify a subjective particular body in time that could also be anybody. And that idea of making a new relation between the universal and the subjective, between the intimate and the, uh, and the general, uh, I think that was my first step. Let's engage with the geology of the island, engage with its position in relation to its neighborly islands, and think about time, space, and the development of, of human consciousness. We are surrounded by deconstructed architecture that is made of individual blocks. Um, that have been deconstructed and then re-articulated by archaeologists very carefully and laid out in these lines of stones. You see it everywhere. There's a sense in which this is an absolute objective correlative of a digital age in which information comes in bits and we make images out of coding that reassociates the bits into uh, pictures. I took this idea then as the, the basic kind of syntax of the exhibition. Let's start with these indexical bodies that are literally like materialized shadows of a, of a living body and then let us begin to interrogate the idea of the body as a place. Why do I choose to use this, you could say, rusty, ugly iron? Well, because of two things. One is it's uh, the, uh, a material that we associate with now, with the Industrial Revolution, with, with in a way, our transformation of, of uh, the mineral reality of, uh, of this planet. And two, that it separates these works from, in a way, the great history of the statue made out of bronze or marble. That was always either about idealization or about narrative. And these don't play that game. There is no story here other than the story that the viewer brings to the work. Can we allow a journey through this extraordinary landscape that is already a dialogue between history, geology, and now, and allow the far-off things to be seen at one moment on the horizon, and then the next moment in proximity so that you can touch them? And this relation between the revealed and the hidden, between that which can be seen and that which can be touched and that which can be imagined, that's a very important part of the, in a way, invitation of the 
of this uh, project. This is my uh, wish to use sculpture to reposition our feelings of being alive from very uh, high ideals and uh, the possibility of perfectibility to something felt bodily, manifest and material. And for me, this is the most wonderful context to do that. You have an agora, you have a slave market, you have a gymnasium, you have a hippodrome, you have a stadium. In a way, the, this Greek ideal of the balance, the charisma between mind and body being expressed in the grace of the body and its, its activity, linked then also with the sacred and with the economic. I wasn't ever interested in illustrating the ways in which these spaces might have been used historically. But I was interested in taking the whole site, in some senses, as a future map, rather than simply a picture of the past. And thinking in terms of, in a way, sculpture's ability to always talk to a generation that hasn't yet been born. And to use this site as a palimpsest, or a kind of meditation ground, in which we can think about human futures.